Okay, in this video, we're going to show you centroid extraction followed by hand rotation. Those usually go together, although there's certainly other combinations. But we're going to start from the beginning, so we're going to open DOS box. Here we are at our PQ method prompt. We will put in PQ method, and it'll start our program. We put in QW2012 because that's the name of our project we've been working on. I'll remind you that we have our 44 statements entered. And if we go into Q Enter and Query, we can see that at this point we have, here's our design, and here are seven sorts that are entered. It's certainly not all of them. We have a couple more, but we'll just demonstrate this way for now. So we'll go back to our main menu, which means that we exit the Q Enter. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a centroid factor analysis. It's an extraction method, which we've talked about a little bit. So we pick three. It says, how many centroids do you wish to extract? Here we'll start off with seven because that's the maximum. Tells us this thing about the communality of sort number three. We're not worried about that, so we're not going to adjust anything. And now we're going to do Q rotate, which is five. Do we want to launch it? Yes. And here we are. Sorry, it's a little small. It's just the way DOSBox is handling it. Is this a continuation of a previous sort? We're going to say no. How many factors to keep? We'll start with seven just to look at them and see what we have. So there are our values. We can now do F6 on the function keys at the top of your keyboard just to see what kind of um, situation we have. So here, we it looks like we really have probably two factors, not unlike our Veramax. We can do a couple things here. I often say save factor matrix. And we're just going to keep factors 1 and 2. Maybe we'll keep factor 3 just because. And that saves successfully. Now we want to just look at those three factors. So I found that when I show this, right, I get out of here and then I go back in. So we just don't have to worry about the other factors or the other factors that we see. So is this a continuation? Yes. And here we have um, our flags. We can do a perform automatic flagging again. And we see it looks pretty much the same. Um, if we look here, right, number three is loaded on but all three factors. And really for factor three, we don't have any other significant loadings here. Right, the 0.43 for factor number three is is the only one that's above, say, point, point 0.3, just as a ballpark. Um, we have some pretty ugly looking things in here, as far as um, our loading. So here we have two is 0.78, or and on fact on factor number one, but it's 0.53 on factor number two. Now, when it does the, the pre-flagging, it uses an algorithm, which isn't perfect. And so we might say, well, gee, factor number, or sort number two is 78% represented by uh, view number one and 53% represented by view number two. We probably don't want that flagged. We can highlight that, so F3. And we can do some other things with this. That'll be our next, um, our next video. We might want to look at a couple of these just because we want to focus on them. And so the highlight, which we hit end. By the way, CR, whenever you see CR in, these, um, in the menu, it stands for carriage return. It's the enter key. It's left over from the old days, right? And we'll save this, and then we'll do our next video.